welcome back to the vlog. Today, I am so excited that the hoopla of Taylor Swift Eras Tour has all ended. If you wanna see my Eras Tour experience, including being on a chaotic party bus, watch the previous vlog. Today we are getting back into chaos and cottagecore, which is sort of the balance that I like to strike here on the Rosie Be Me YouTube channel. And nothing, nothing starts off that idea, that storytelling arc better than a day visiting anthropology. I am headed to an anthropology in New Jersey because I need a candle and it's a very special candle. So they normally have the Capri Blue Volcano Candle. They come out with a very special summer scent called Coastal Capri. I've been getting it for like a decade ever since I worked at anthropology. It's one of my favorite scents. It's like a fruity, almost sort of like a sorbet, sherbet inspired candle. And it just makes your house smell like a tropical drink. I need it. I want it, but first I'm getting some Starbucks. Uh, I want a fruity little something. I want a special little drink to wet my whistle. So I'm gonna try and remember my favorite drink that I had last year, and I think it was a, an iced venti lemonade with a little bit of coconut milk in that, and then topped with a strawberry cold foam. Hopefully this is it. I remember it just tasted, again, like we're in this like weird sherbet mode. I just should probably buy sherbet if I'm getting drinks that taste like sherbet and a candle that smells like sherbet. The answer to all of the questions and the needs here is just buy a friggin' gallon of sherbet, but that's not what's gonna happen today. So stay tuned, more entertainment to follow. Anything else? Yeah, can I do a venti lemonade with uh, coconut milk in the lemonade? And then can I do the sweet cream cold foam with the strawberry puree uh, blended into that? Everything else? Um, what cake pops do you have? You know, right away, it's not a cute version of this. You can barely see like the yellow of the lemonade. Everything's very um, blown out anyways. I'm gonna put this like right here and try and make it dark for you by perching it on my shoulder. <laughs> instead of changing my camera settings. Normally this is more yellow, and today it's kind of just like an off-white, but you know what? It could still taste delicious. Let's not be too judgmental. Oh, it's incredible. Mm. <laughs> this is the bee that I got. This is the same mold that they use for everything. This has been a fucking dog at Target. This has been an owl. This has been a fox. And this is not <laughs> in what world? <laughs> Is this a bee? It looks it looks like another cat, but like a weird cat. Hello. <laughs> I look like a bee, but I don't think I am one. <laughs> but you know what? I applaud them. They have really stretched what this mold can do. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's good. And I know some of you guys are gonna clock me. Ro, you're gluten free. I'm kind of gluten free. That's the reality. If I were to eat like a whole croissant right now, my day would be and ruined but like sampling a cake pop not gonna do anything maybe if anything my cheeks might turn red and my neck might hurt a little bit but it doesn't do what like a full croissant would do which is make my whole body radiate with pain and then make my hormones so crazy that I cry for three days straight and see no end in sight uh, of my misery and, and feel uh, dark feelings about myself. And can you believe that? That's what a, a delicious croissant will do to me? I'm not a liar. I just, um, I enjoy torturing myself, I guess. Okay, we need to go to anthropology. Okay, just a quick little haul. I am a new New York resident, so I gotta go to a Yankees game. So I got a Yankees cap in this really pretty fuchsia. 
Oh, shut. Shut it. Hi, Barbie. Okay, next. Trying to be, there we go, hide my face. So I have the sunscreen of this. I got the after sun gel because we laid out the other day and I got a little pink, but it, it clearly didn't turn into a sunburn, which is nice. But I do want to just have the aloe vera gel. Okay, this might be a little too late, but I was hunting for this Ava NYC Queen K-W-E-E. E N silver glitter spray. I met some girls at Eras Tour and they were covered in this and I knew what it was because I had been searching for this product. This is a body glitter and hair glitter and it is just, it's so intense. It looks amazing in person. It just looks, let's see if it can like, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. But I swear to God in person, it's like incredible. It's blinding glitter. It looks fantastic in the hair, on the body. I wish I had it for Air's tour, but now I have it for, for, I don't know what, just ready to go. This paper is bringing back so many memories. I worked in an anthropology for like a full decade, not in order. It was my first job in high school, took a few years off, worked, worked it when I lived in Los Angeles and was trying to be an actor, took a few years off, then worked it whenever I had moved back to Dallas, Texas. So anthropology is like, I would say part of my DNA. Yeah, this is the reason why we went is the summer scent that anthropology always has that I freaking love. Fresh, fruity. Notes of pineapple, verbena, and coconut are accented with sparkling lemon, bergamot, and grapefruit. I feel like that's like very elevated language for what this actually smells like. And this smells like something from childhood. Some like distinct kind of like popsicle or candy. I literally drove here for this candle specifically. And what do you think? Mm -hmm. Does it smell like summer to you? Yeah, it smells like a nice vacation. Yeah, and it looks mm -hmm. like a nice vacation. I was fully prepared to be disappointed, and then I ended up buying more things than I needed, which, you know, could be a win, could be a lose, but all of these products I will use. <gasps> Y'all, this fucking hat, I could, I'm so happy! <laughs> This is my first movie to see in the city. Oh, really? You go a lot to movies yeah. in the city. But I'm very, very excited. We're meeting up with Jackie in the city. So they'll see ya. I'll give you my thoughts. What are you most <laughs> excited about? I'm most excited to like the young woman, Hallie, mm -hmm. playing her. She has a really pretty voice. So I'm really excited to hear some singing. And I'm excited to see all the terrifying animals. And then at McDonald's, they have Happy Meals with the toys for the movie. And I think that I should get that. Um, so bright on this train. I'm gonna get like a star. The Little Mermaid and we probably went to the worst theater in New York City. Sorry, Angelica in Midtown, but maybe you should have air conditioning. I will compliment you on your seats. The seats were excellent. They were full recliners. I love a full recliner moment, but it was so hot in that theater. It was cooler outside than it was inside. And I think that's a massive problem. I was very hot. There's no AC running. The chairs were great. The screen was small. I definitely need to go to the eye doctor. This Disney remake of The Little Mermaid is one of the best live action remakes I've seen. It was so good. Halle Bailey was so talented. I just felt like I was emotional 
purely based on her singing voice alone. I think that's very impactful and something that they're just now realizing because I remember enjoying seeing the Beauty and the Beast remake with Emma Watson, but I think upon reflection, I was like, it's not really that great. And I think one of the things that makes it not that great is that she's just not a trained singer. And I think that really does impact things like these old, these older Disney animated films from like when I was a kid are wonderful because they're not just massive celebrity casts, they're cast with Broadway actors who are very skilled at what they do. Aside from a couple of like very weird shoehorned in Lin-Manuel Miranda moments with like a, a very identifiable signature rap song uh, given by a bird played by Aquafina. His style is so recognizable that I'm just like, okay, I get it. I, I liked, there are some other new original songs in this live action remake of The Little Mermaid specifically the one that Ariel sings in her head. I loved, I thought that was really beautiful. It felt like very distinct classic musical theater. I didn't care about like the Eric character's soliloquy song. So much of like this like trope of like instantly falling in love just doesn't feel earned when it's real human being actors. Like animated characters are like, yeah, sure. You guys fell in love immediately. I can buy into that. But like when it's actors who have to like summon those emotions on camera. I, I feel like it must be so difficult. But the real standout and the reason why you should see this movie is, is Halle Bailey. I feel like she's a true star in the making. I wept just listening to her sing. I think she's so emotive and has such a beautiful, unique, and at the same time, very classic sounding singing voice. It was just stunning. Javier Bardem looks goofy in this movie. I think Melissa McCarthy was a lot better than I anticipated her being. I think she had a fun vocal intonation as the character. And the movie is just like beautiful. I was very much intent on having a goth girl summer and now I wanna have like a mermaid girl summer and dress in pretty colors. If you haven't seen it, I recommend seeing it on the big screen, even though <laughs> I did see it on a very crappy screen. It's one of the better, if not the best live action Disney remakes that I've seen. So I am a little bit like less unnerved that they're going to remake all of their original IP <laughs> into live action movies instead of like exploring the multitudes of other stories there are. We saw a trailer though during the movie. Do you remember where that trailer was? The bird. Oh, it was called Wish. Yes. Not the duck. There's a new Disney movie called Wish that we saw a trailer for that looked really beautiful and very classic Disney. It had a different animation style that looked kind of a cross between Pixar and like a two dimensional animation. So I'll be really excited to see that. It comes out in November. And usually movies that release around that time are just higher quality movies than like anything else. So I have extremely high hopes for that. I'm not a Disney adult. I just like seeing creative things. And I feel like some of the more creative storytelling just happens to be in like children's media. So I'll see any Disney movie that comes out. Today, moving on, I have a project that I'm gonna be working on and it's going through my entire closet. My body size has been changing. I've been losing a little bit of weight and it kind of has made most of my closet kind of like unusable at this point. And I also just tend to accumulate a lot because of my job as primarily an Instagram style, lifestyle, fashion, I'm something. I am an expert. Look at me. I'm smart. But I have accumulated a lot of stuff because of work. And now most of it doesn't really fit. So I need to evaluate what's in there, what I want to keep, and what still works, and what needs to just like be sold, what needs to be donated. Go through the whole thing. I'm really actually excited about it. Yes, I am excited for a tour, believe it or not. But this is hidden. So we're gonna just jump into it and uh, see what's going on in the closet. Hi, AD. Welcome to my closet. Um, just a rundown of what's going on. The semblance of organization that's in here. These are like dresses that are in, kind of in current rotation. In here I have like t-shirts, mostly graphic tees that I wear. This was kind of like tops and shirts, but I think it's gotten jumbled. Back here are like event dresses that are like less frequently used. And then these are more dresses, there's jackets. Up here, these are all like my giant poofy dresses. So like sulky dresses, like, crazy Amazon dresses, like photo shoot dresses and things that I wore for like my Eras tour training videos, like anything that's just like would take up a tremendous amount of like width. And then I have way too many shoes. I don't know how that happened because I used, I think it was because I used to be a person that didn't have a lot of shoes. Like footwear was always the last thing on my mind. So I think like last year I was like, I'm going to commit to like actually having a decent shoe wardrobe. And then, you know, you just go over the top. There's just like so much that could be better organized, but here we've got like bigger boots and stuff that don't fit. 
random activity stuff, slippers, fun bags. This is so cool. I'm gonna just show you, look. This is a bag from Selkie that looks like a pillow. How, how, like it looks like a slumber party. I haven't worn this yet, but I have like an outfit that I'm gonna stop. Like, this is so good. Oh, by the way, while I'm modeling this bag, let's put my Selkie code on the screen for 10% off your Selkie order. Use my code. It's awesome. And then we have, um, which I want this section to be used more for storage of things that we need throughout the house, but we have like bedding and like throw blankets that are not like really what, what we want to be using seasonally. So if I could like condense this and have like this portion be like linens and towels, that would make me feel very happy. On to, this is the additional part of the closet. We have tried to do, to organize this a few times. I feel like this is the best that we've, I've actually kept up with is that I have like a lot of denim folds in here. This whole area should serve more as like inspiration, things in current rotation and like display. This is gonna be like probably a multi-day process, but we'll film all of it. So I have all my fragrances in here. These are really deep. So I think we could stand to get like some black boxes to put back here with things that are more like seasonal and not in use and then have like fragrances or other like decor displayed closer to the top. And then there's just like random, like I call these danger boxes. It's just like a bag of shit that I have no idea where to put it. And if I can eliminate those, I'll be really happy. In here, I've got like just random stuff. I know that like we had already tried to devise things to do in here, but yeah. So I really want to like super decorate this room, make it like really fun, like paint it, get rid of like this Peloton over here in the corner, maybe get rid of this mirror, but I need to first like eliminate <laughs> the objects that are being stored in the closet and in this wardrobe system. So that's what we're doing today. Step one of this like multi-week process. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> through this I'm like will this fit is my first thing in my mind and then from there I'm like is this resale quality for Poshmark or is this donate quality or third is this just like beyond any human deserving to interact <laughs> with the piece so we've got the pile of donates and then over here is the pile of resells which usually I try to stick to like name brand nice things I don't like to resell things that people won't feel positive about receiving and so it's important for me to provide nice resale items, which there's great things in here. A lot of stuff like, it's like for a campaign that I shoot. So like tags are still on. Sometimes I just wear it the one time for whatever ad campaign I'm gonna do. And then it just doesn't like end up being the most functional item in my wardrobe. I loved this top though, oh my God. Look at this, like it's a black blouse black silk blouse with this witchy collar on it. Girl, it's like giving the crucible, but like grown up cocktail night. Love that. I am very unlike the average person cleaning their closet just because I perceive my closet as like inventory to do my job. And a lot of other people I think have much more emotional relationships with their closets. I have massive purges and resales and donate times. Like I would say quarterly. And I don't think that the average consumer has that, but I am really happy to provide barely worn items to a resale market for a significant discount. That like brings me joy. <laughs> Now I'll show you something that I am emotionally attached to and you may see a pattern. It's usually like witchy celestial things that I like to keep. So this is a fair all sweater that I got from J. Crew two years ago or two uh, falls ago. And it's just neutral and really cute. It's like pilling a little bit, but I can like shave those down. But look, it's got, it's got a little moves on it. And I wore this literally the week of getting married. Let me jump over here real quick. Again, celestial. This dress I wore for my engagement photos. What stinks is that I don't like to keep a lot of things that are like statement pieces because I like to really rewear my wardrobe 
for my social media accounts. And I don't like wearing pieces that are so exciting like this that a lot of people are gonna be like, oh my God, where did you get this from? And then I have to like be disappointing and be like, sorry, this was from Mod Cloth five years ago. You'll never get it. And it would bring me more joy to have somebody who felt so passionately about this dress be able to own it. So she is going away. These kind of tell similar stories. They both revolve around like my love of celestial stuff and my marriage. And I get to keep this one. So that's a nice win. You don't need too much. And besides I have the ring and I have the actual husband. So <laughs> whatever. <laughs> like black and white sneakers and I am really sad. I think it's time to say goodbye to these finally. They just, I've really, these are good and I'll never stop calling them Vejas. I know they're Vijas, Ugh. but these are incredible. I feel like these are some of the only like flat, like non, non specifically wide. Are you scared? Please. Oh, I didn't realize he was back there. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm so sorry to see these go. That means I feel like I need a new pair. I don't know. I'm just like looking at them and I'm like, am I getting rid of something that's like I could potentially like clean and make good? I really don't know. I feel like I'm seeing scuffing on the leather. The rubber sole is just like a shit show. The logo is fading off. Whereas look at, because I, I did it. This is before. And I'm going to tell you something. This is a very important tip. These are before I found protective sprays. And now all of my footwear, um, at least like sneakers and tennis shoes and like leather ones, I spray. I wear these into the city and just like they have the spray on them. And I feel like that looks so much better. I'll link the one that I like a lot in the description box. It's, it's just weird to see like where... I know I over purchased to accommodate things that I didn't think that I had. And I'm also really bad about like not returning things, especially shoes, because you never know, like, do I need to break this in or is this just not working? Cause sometimes it's like, you don't really know. Shoes are hard. These are good. New balances. These look chic too. So keeping these, the black and white shoe game I have on lock. And then there's stuff like this, which is like, this is like very, particular for like a certain time of year. This is obviously like my fall Halloween vibe. And there's only like, there's only one context I would wear these. And that's like with black tights and like a black mini dress. And that's like six. So at least I know that like they'll maintain their integrity for a really long time, but they also don't see a lot of wear. These ones I wore a lot last year, just the plain Oxford. So the best time to purchase heels, in my opinion, or fancy shoes, fall and holiday from two retailers that I love. So J. Crew has the best, the best holiday heels, especially if you like a more conservative, like low heel. These are from two years ago. This is from this past holiday. Oh, and I feel like I'll start wearing these in like September, October. They're so fun. These little mules, this is from the Sam Edelman holiday collection. These look spectacular with like a pair of denim and a white t-shirt. You just look a little bit fancy. So Sam Edelman holiday shoes. They make good wide shoes. J. Crew, if you have wide feet, which I do, J. Crew is low key like a wide foot retailer, even though they don't explicitly state that. I've never had a problem with any of their like heels or flats. What are you? I wore these, I got these specifically before I moved to the city. I got these because I was influenced by someone who's actually my friend now, Rachel Martino. And she always wore these with her like going out in the winter. For me though, they just were too heavy. I think if you're a really, uh, if you're like a petite lady, these are fun, but on me, I kind of look like Frankenstein. <laughs> just like different proportions. Um, that's something else to maintain is that like, I sometimes buy things just cause they look great on someone else. But like on like a Reese Witherspoon, this is like a cutesy wootsy. Like I got cute, big chunky boots. But like, if you're a tall, thick person, yeah, it's like Frankenstein. Are you sandals? These are fisherman sandals. They have a new iteration every year. This is last year's iteration. They still had a few left. Uh, and now they have like ones with rubber soles, which I'm sure are fantastic. I also have a Converse problem. These are custom that I designed myself because they do have um, on the website a custom section and you can detail everything from the interior fabric to the back stripe to like what color the grommets are to what color this patch is. You can like really make it hyper specific. And these are my, yes, my Halloween, my fall, fall Halloween high tops. 
a common thing that we've discovered during this process is that I have been keeping like anything that's fall and Halloween. So I'm passionate about that. And that means I'm living in the right part of the country now. It's really stupid. They're going, <laughs> this is so cute. I got one kitty hanging out on the bottom shelf right here. And then this kitty is playing with my boots. Oh yeah. Madewell makes incredible boots. They are the ones that you should break in. They are slightly uncomfortable and tight when you first get them, but they actually will stretch out and mold to your foot. These are incredible. I'm saving these. Even if they don't have them next year, like they look so good. Those are sexy. And this is like, look, look how much different. You're still getting the same effect. So we have like a little bit of a slight platform, but I think that it, what's important here is that the toe is narrow on this one. So if you've got like a thicker leg, I think it's important to bring it to a little bit more of a point. So I get the same vibe. It's not the like fur lined, but honestly the fur lining is just like decor. It doesn't really continue like throughout most of the boot. I'm gonna say it. Uh, I think I live by the old standard of like a poor man can't afford cheap shoes. And I do believe that. I think you should get yourself a nice pair of boots. And I've tried everything. These I had for a Target campaign. This is probably perfect for somebody who lives in Texas. If you're somebody who has milder winters and falls, a Target boot is great for you because you don't have to actually like test it in like the harder weather and wear. Now that I live here in New York, I think that leather is much more important to me and more substantial. I have real Uggs and then I have Amazon Uggs to like compare and contrast and the, the Cushion Air, these are, these are good. Oh, this is Walmart. This is not Amazon. This is Time and True from Walmart and they are actually wide sole. So that's another caveat is that sometimes like, unfortunately in like the more luxury shoe market or like these heritage brands, they don't make wide shoes, which is insane to me because I know so many women, not just plus size women that wear wide sole shoes. Where did the rich ladies buy high heels? These are another Lane Bryant pair. It's like sock boots. I think these sold out so fast that I couldn't link them, which is upsetting to me. I always get like furious if I make a purchase and I can't share it online. I just like, it's a really weird place to live in because I don't shop the way I used to. I don't like necessarily buy things to satisfy myself. I buy them that so I can find if this is like a functional thing to share with people. And when I can't share it, I become livid. <laughs> Sorry. Did I hit you? No. These are really popular. These were like a viral shoe, the New Balance 550s. I got these from StockX because they were so popular. I just think they're too narrow of a shoe. I don't find them comfortable. They don't look as cute on me. This is another thing where it's like, I feel like the majority of people wearing them and hyping them are very thin women. So they just look completely different. And I think that these kind of look like grandma shoes on me and not in like the cool way that you want it. Look how like unworn these are. So I put them on and I was like, nope, I love these. These are so cute. Those are just look great with a pair of black leggings. These have been sprayed with my protective spray. <laughs> Yeah, get a good shoe protectant because, and these have been sprayed too. And I have walked, Jackie, you were with me when I walked through Manhattan in these and aren't they pristine? Okay, that's all you get for shoes. I'm gonna go back to sorting them because my camera's about to die. Okay, so we have multiple bags of items to donate. We have completely cleared out my closet. It's really insane. I will show you tomorrow. I'll just film it right now, but my battery's running low. So let's do this fast. Okay, look at my closet, you guys. <laughs> well, all these bags are things that we're gonna sell. And then everything is all lined up beautifully. And then over here, oh my gosh, color-coded jeans. And now let's get back to what I was really trying to do. Hi me, I'm in my little sports bra. It's that time of year again where Lay's has the most ridiculous chip flavors. And today I got BLT sandwich. There's Cuban sandwich and also like a Buffalo ranch chicken sandwich. I didn't have those at the store. So I guess you're just gonna see me try these over the month as I accumulate them. We're gonna do the BLT sandwich. Let's open it. Okay, so going in my mouth. What the f that's extremely impressive. I literally taste the bacon and the tomato separately. I feel like there's a hint of mayo on there too. These are good. I love these. 
This is very yummy. Doesn't taste like another chip I've had. Just tastes good. Why do I feel like I'm the girl in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Violet, and she's like, mmm, mashed potatoes and turkey dinner. Mmm, it's so delicious. I can taste the gravy dripping down my throat. Mmm, you know, you know the girl.